Welcome back. Today we're going to dig into a study that may totally upend a part of what you thought was safe when trying to optimize body composition, cravings and hormonal balance. And yes, it ties into hunger, metabolism and ultimately how hard it is to build or maintain lean mass and testosterone levels while dieting. So buckle in, let's get into it. We all want to hack our diet, cut calories, hit protein, drink diet stuff, feel full. But what if one of the most popular tricks using zero calorie sweeteners is quietly undermining your results? What if that sweetener isn't benign, but messing with your brain's hunger circuits? That's exactly what a landmark 2025 study out of Nature Metabolism suggests. We're going to break it down today, connect it to hormones, and I'll give you a protocol you can use immediately to protect your gains. Let me set the stage. The study is titled Non-Caloric Sweetener Effects on Brain's Appetite Regulation in Individuals Across Varying Body Weights. It was done with 75 young adults, men and women across normal weight, overweight and obese categories. Each person came in on three separate occasions, separated by days. On each, they consumed one of the three drinks. Water, a drink sweetened with sucralose, a non-caloric artificial sweetener, or a drink sweetened with sucrose, regular sugar. During each visit, before and after, they took fMRI scans to see what the brain was doing, measured blood for glucose, insulin, hormones, and asked each person how hungry they felt. The goal was to see how sweetness without calories might trick the brain. Does your hypothalamus, the master regulator of hunger, react differently to sucralose versus sugar? And what are the downstream effects? They uncovered several striking results. Let me walk you through the big ones and show you why this matters for someone chasing muscle and hormone optimization. Sucralose cranked up hypothalamic activation versus sugar and water. Compared to sucrose, sucralose caused greater blood flow in the hypothalamus, P less than 0.018. Compared to water, sucralose also increased hypothalamic activation, P less than 0.019. This is important because hypothalamic activation often means your brain is in hungrier energy seeking mode. People reported feeling hungrier after sucralose versus sugar. Yes, the subjective ratings match the scans, Participants felt hungrier after sucralose than sugar. Now, interestingly, versus water, sucralose increased hypothalamic activity, but did not always boost reported hunger. Sugar triggered metabolic hormonal signals, sucralose didn't. When participants drank sucrose, glucose and insulin levels rose, and hormones linked to fullness like GLP-1 were activated. Those signals correlated with reduced activity in parts of the hypothalamus. In short, sugar triggered the I'm full message received loop, but sucralose, nothing. No spike in glucose, no insulin surge beyond baseline. No GLP-1 response. It was metabolically neutral, but neurologically very active. Brain connectivity shifts, sucralose rewired hunger networks. After sucralose intake versus sugar or water, the hypothalamus showed increased functional connections with brain regions involved in motivation, sensory processing and decision making like the interior cingulate cortex and parietal areas. That suggests sucralose doesn't just activate hunger regions, it may prime your brain to pay more attention to food cues, make cravings stronger and heighten reward circuits around eating. Individual differences, weight status and sex matter. Among people of normal weight, sucralose triggered stronger hypothalamic activation compared to sugar. Among those with obesity, sucralose increased activation compared to water, but not always significantly versus sugar. For participants with overweight, effects were in between less clear. Women showed stronger brain responses to sucralose than men did. So sucralose may be more dangerous neurologically in certain populations, especially women or people with higher BMI. So why is this important in real world diet, training and hormonal optimization? Here's a theory this study supports. Your tongue tells your brain, hey, sweetness ahead. The brain evolved over millions of years, expects that sweetness means incoming energy, calories. When real sugar comes in, your gut, pancreas and hormone systems respond. Glucose rises, insulin and GLP-1 release, hunger signals dampen. The feedback loop is how your body calibrates. Okay, energy's here. Scale back the hunger drive. With sucralose, the first part fires. Sweetness detection. But the second part, nutrient feedback signals, doesn't. The brain anticipates calories, but they never arrive. That mismatch or broken promise may push hunger circuits higher, not lower. The brain says, where's the energy you promised me? And 
intensifies appetite. Basically, you trigger the goal find food pathways, but you never satisfy them. Over time, this can degrade your ability to regulate appetite, making diet adherence harder, provoking cravings and promoting overeating, even though the sweetener had zero calories. That's not just theory now. This study gives real human evidence of that mismatch in action. You may wonder, this is about hunger and brains. What does it have to do with testosterone and muscle? Good question. Let me draw the lines. Cravings, overconsumption, fat gain. If sucralose subtly increases your hunger drive over time, that raises the risk of overeating, even in people trying to diet. More energy coming in, higher fat levels. Excess adiposity can suppress testosterone via aromatase activity, inflammatory pathways, and insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is catabolic. It damages nutrient partitioning, impairs muscle protein synthesis, inflames the system, and often coexists with lower testosterone. Neuroendocrine dysregulation. If your brain's hunger circuits become dysregulated, your stress hormones, cortisol, appetite hormones, ghrelin, leptin, and insulin signaling can go haywire. That indirectly influences the endocrine milieu, testosterone being sensitive to stress, inflammation, and metabolic signals. Diet adherence and consistency. One of the biggest challenges in optimizing hormones is staying in a consistent sweet spot. Calorie, macro, sleep, stress. If sucralone undermines that by injecting subconscious hunger, cravings, and variable intake, you lose control and you gain suffer. In short, sucralose might not directly kill testosterone, but by messing with appetite, body composition, metabolic health, and diet control, it puts you at a disadvantage. To remain legit, let's cover the caveats. This study is acute, short term. It covers immediate brain and hunger responses, not chronic weight gain over months or years. Participants were young, relatively healthy. We didn't know how this plays out in older men, diabetics or heavy lifters. Sweetness was matched, but individual experience, taste, perception, psychological expectation may differ. Hunger is subjective. Brain scans are powerful, but indirect. It focuses on sucralose. Other sweetness, aspartame, stevia, monk fruit may behave differently. The hormonal endpoints, for example, testosterone, were not measured. So the link to T is inferred, not proven. But even with these limits, this is one of the clearest human neural data points we've had on sweet taste without energy messing with your brain. Okay, so how do we use this info to protect your gains, hormones, and cravings? Here's what I do. Limit sucralose and other artificial sweeteners as routine staples. Don't let diet sodas or sweetened protein drinks become your default zero calorie go-to. Use them as the occasional treat, not everyday staples. Prefer sweetness sources your body recognizes. Real fruits, small amounts of honey, maple, if your system handles them. Natural low caloric sweeteners with better data, for example, stevia, monk fruit, Stay cautious, natural doesn't mean perfect. Use neutral flavors or unflavored options more. Water, carbonated water, herbal teas, minimal flavoring. If you need flavor, use things like citrus, herbs, spices, not intense sweetness by default. If you do use sweeteners occasionally, stack them with fullness signals. Include protein, healthy fats, fiber, volume. Don't rely on sweetness alone to manage hunger. Salt electrolytes hack. Sometimes cravings for sweet are really cravings for something else. Salt hydration. There's neuroscience rationale. The brain has overlapping nerve circuits for salt and reward. Ensuring your electrolytes are balanced, sodium, magnesium, potassium can blunt sweet craving impulses. Track your hunger, cravings, energy, and diet consistency. If you use a sweetener on off days, monitor whether your cravings or intake creep upward in the days after. Focus on metabolic health and insulin sensitivity because this brain susceptibility was stronger in those with poorer insulin sensitivity. Maintaining insulin sensitivity by resistance training, good carb timing and avoiding chronically high sugar diets may buffer you. Occasional sweet breaks, pick times, for example refeed days, where you allow more sugar or sweet stuff intentionally. Your brain learns that sweetness sometimes does bring calories, reducing mismatch shock. One of the excited things about this study is it opens doors. We still need long-term data. Does habitual sucralose use over months raise fat gain, worsen hormonal profiles, or reduce lean mass? But for now, this is a giant red flag. Even zero calorie things aren't necessarily metabolically inert when it comes to the brain. So here's a challenge for you. For the next 30 days, cut out on massively reduced sucralose 
or high intensity artificial sweeteners. Track any changes in craving, appetite, energy, diet consistency, and body composition. See how your mind and body react without that sweet dopamine shortcut. If you find it helps you stay leaner, have crispier hunger cues, or stay more stable, that's your personal proof. And when the long term data comes, you'll be ahead of the curve. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.